The Diamondbacks are now in the driver's seat after taking care of business in Game 1 against the LA Dodgers, but can they really beat them in the NLDS? You are a Locked On Diamondbacks, your daily Arizona Diamondbacks podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked on Diamondbacks podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day listening to Miller Thomas, host of the Locked on Diamondbacks podcast for many seasons now since the 2020 season. Go check out my website, MillerThomas24.myportfolio.com to see all my latest work. And thank you for making Locked on Diamondbacks your first listen every day. I'm recording this podcast on vacation right now. I'm currently in Vegas. It's I don't even want to say the time because that's how late it is, but I want to do a little post-game podcast for you guys because, of course, the D-backs dominated in Game 1 against the Dodgers, and I felt like I had to talk about it. That's why, if you're watching this on YouTube, my background is looking pretty weird because I am in an undisclosed location, but don't worry, I have my microphone with me. So, the D-backs take care of business in Game 1 against the LA Dodgers. And they are now in the driver's seat. I said entering the series, this Dodgers pitching staff was vulnerable. I said this Dodgers pitching staff can be taken after. You got Clayton Kershaw, known postseason struggler, rookie in the second game. And then who knows in game three, Lance Lynn or Ryan Pepio. We just don't know. And of course, those Kershaw playoff struggles show themselves in game one because he looked bad against the D-backs. You can honestly say it was the worst start in Kershaw's career, not just his postseason career. This might be the worst Kershaw start of all time. It's definitely in the running. He gave up five runs before recording an out tonight. And what I loved from the D-backs offense, watching them against Clay Kershaw in the first inning and just throughout the game, they did not take their foot off the Dodgers' neck. They repeatedly attacked the Dodgers' pitching staff. They kept their foot on the gas. Whenever they saw run scoring opportunities, they came through in those situations. They were hungry every inning. You never saw them let up no matter what the score said. It felt like the D-backs were playing like they were behind in the game throughout the entire game. And I think that was evident with how aggressive they were at the plate as opposed to the L.A. Dodgers. And when you look at Clayton Kershaw in this game, like I said, maybe his worst start ever. Definitely his worst postseason start ever, which is crazy considering how many postseason struggles and playoff disasters he had uh you could say this is maybe the worst of them all he became the first pitcher in postseason history to allow five or more runs before recording an out and also five or more hits before recording an out not even a reliever has done that so really terrible stuff by kershaw if you want to know something funny if you look at his era after this game 162 not 1.62 like 162 was his ERA after leaving this game. Kershaw, a guy who legend in the regular season. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. This is a guy who has won an MVP, a Cy Young, has all the numbers. You look at the ERA. You look at the strikeouts. Season after season, Kershaw has been the cream of the cop. Uh, the cream of the crop when you look at his regular season stats but the postseason Clayton Kershaw just hasn't been there I don't know what it is there are some guys who when you get to the playoffs those pressurized moments it's just not the same some guys like Eminem would say knees weak palms are sweaty right and maybe Kershaw is one of those guys I think the evidence would suggest and say He's one of those guys considering all the playoff disasters he's had throughout his career. And game one, NLDS against the D-backs, just one more, 162 ERA 
after leaving the start. And the players that we said who have had career success against Clay Kershaw showed up in the first inning of this game. Corbin Carroll, Christian Walker, Ketel Marte. We all laid out in a podcast last week how all three of them, the three biggest stars on the D-backs, the three deadliest players on the D-backs, all of them had career success against Clint Kershaw. Corbin Carroll was like four for seven in his career against Kershaw. The other two guys, really good numbers against Kershaw as well. All of them in the first inning, base hits, did damage, really good stuff to see from those guys. And if you look at the exit velo in the first inning of this game, I mean, uh, up and down the lineup, I mean, 100 miles an hour off the bat, you look at stat casts, a lot of dark red indicating hard power, hard contact off the bat, just crushing the pitches of Clayton Kershaw repeatedly over and over. D backs batters completely locked in. And when you look at this game, I mean, not even just the top three deadliest players were the main benefactors in this game because the Thomases and the Gabriel Morenos, two guys who you look at Thomas, kind of struggled, kind of struggled in the regular season from an offensive standpoint. We know what he can do defensively. Gabriel Moreno, I mean, from a slugging standpoint, not a ton of power. Both of those guys, not a ton of power when you look at the regular season. Both of them, two home runs so far in the postseason. Both of them heating up. Gabriel Moreno, home run in the first. Thomas, home run in the seventh. Really incredible stuff uh, from those two guys. Corbin Carroll, Gabriel Moreno, and Alec Thomas. The D-backs are the second team in postseason history with three players aged 23 or younger with multiple home runs in a single postseason. Joining 2015 Chicago Cubs, Chris Bryant, Kyle Schwarber, Jorge Soler. And if you remember on a podcast last week when I talked about why Corbin Carroll can be the best player in the series as a rookie. I laid out some other rookies in previous years who have dominated the postseason. Two of them, Kyle Schwarber and Jorge Soler. So these D-backs youngsters have joined a pretty incredible list. And when you consider those guys, I mean, I don't remember off the top of my head how many of them were part of that 2016 uh, Cubs run. I know Chris Bryant for sure. Maybe Jorge Soler, maybe Kyle Schwarber, but at least we saw the makings of a pretty incredible team um, with those young guns on the Cubs back in 2015. So that team won the World Series the very next year. Let's try to do a little bit better, D-backs. Let's try to win the World Series the very first year. And just talk about Al Thomas, king in on that plate appearance he had. I mean, one of the best play appearances literally in postseason history, 14 pitches before his home run, the most pitches in a plate appearance, ending in a home run in postseason history since pitch counts have been tracked back in 1988. Incredible stuff by Alec Thomas. Most pitches in a plate appearance, ending in a home run in d backs franchise history, regular season and postseason. Alec Thomas is a guy, one of the top prospects when he was coming up through the system. Speed was a really good contact hitter as well. We haven't seen the offense as much on the major league level, but the defense has always been incredible. Kind of Jackie Bradley-ish with where he is in his career right now, but when he's giving you that offense, Alec Thomas can be a really incredible and special player, and so far he did that tonight in this D-backs victory. And then Merrill Kelly, I mean, we haven't even talked about him yet. Look great. First career postseason win or excuse me, not just postseason, first career win against the L.A. Dodgers. Merrill Kelly entering this game 0 for 11 in his career against the Dodgers. He finally gets the monkey off his back. We know Merrill Kelly, one of the most underrated pitchers in baseball, truly a compliment to the one-two punch of a Zach Gallen. Merrill Kelly, another fantastic season this year after a really fantastic season last year. Merrill Kelly dominates his matchup against Clint Kershaw. Merrill Kelly comes up big on the road in L.A. Merrill Kelly gets his first career win against the L.A. Dodgers. D-backs now in the driver's seat in this series. One, because you look at the pitching matchups, you're going to have Zach Gallen in the game two against rookie Bobby Miller. You hope that's one where Zach Gallen dominates. 
He has to come through. He has to be special. After seeing what Merrill Kelly did in game one, it would be really disappointing if Zach Gallon went out there in game two and just really disappointed if he just gave up a ton of contact, runs galore. If we saw his second half Zach Gallon in the game two, that would be really disappointing against a rookie pitcher. So hopefully the D-backs offense can continue their momentum against the youngster and Zach Gallon can shut down this Dodgers lineup on the road. And then plus the other reason why the D-backs are in the driver's seat beside the pitching matchup, the D-backs now have home field advantage. So in the world where Zach Allen does win game two, the D-backs only have to win one of the two home games at Chase Field, which is insane. I'm planning to definitely go to one of the games. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to go to the Thursday game, the first game against the Dodgers at Chase Field. So we'll see if I'm able to make that happen. I think it's not too bad right now. So I think I'm going to make that happen for sure. D-backs just look so good right now. Let's keep the momentum going in game two. Let's close out the Dodgers and let's beat L.A. in the NLDS.